Hello and welcome to the Property Guide. You're watching ET Now. I'm Freda Souza. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you might have guessed, we're not in the studio this week, but at the Bandra Kurla complex. It really is a marquee space within the space of Mumbai. It's almost the neighborhood that everybody wants to be in. We're talking about how Bandra Kurla complex has changed over the last five years and what it means for all of the neighborhoods around it. Take a quick look at this report and then we'll come back and talk about it. Just another regular day at the BKC Kalanagar Junction. But the new government has high hopes that it will turn around this situation with the help of new infrastructure projects. The Bandra Kurla complex, once marshy land, now hosts over 4 lakh jobs. This planned commercial complex is home to some big names like the National Stock Exchange, SEBI, head offices of various banks, the US consulate in Mumbai and the list goes on. But one of the biggest flaws of this planned business hotspot has been the traffic congestion. As spacious and beautiful as BKC is on the inside, entry and exit points during peak traffic hours are heavily congested. So recently, the Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis gave his nod to the MMRDA to implement a 227 crore rupee project to ease congestion in the area. The project and the approach to make BKC smart might tell a different story in the near future. But even with the lack of infrastructure, prices in and around the complex don't seem to falter. Prices in Banja East currently range between 23,800 to 32,600 rupees a square foot. That's up 28% in two years. In Kudla East, prices moved up 33% over two years, range between 10,000 and 13,350 rupees a square foot. Further north, homes in Santa Cruz West are priced between 31,000 to 40,350 rupees a square foot. And finally, within BKC, commercial spaces have prices averaging around 33,000 rupees a square foot. Right, so those are the prices at uh, BKC and I'm going to introduce you to my panel of guests this uh, week. Gulam Zia is the Executive Director at Knight Frank, Ravi Ahuja, regular on the show, Executive Director at Krishman Wakefield and of course Sumesh Mishra, Executive Vice President at Suntech Realty. We are at Signature Island in fact in BKC which is uh, a Suntech building. Gulam, I want to start by asking you this. Uh, we know that a lot of offices now have moved out of Nariman Point have moved out of South Mumbai into BKC. Is there space left for more commercial construction? So has BKC topped out now or is there more room for people to move into BKC in terms of commercial space? Well, uh, this is a planned development by MMRDA, which is an authority which is responsible for creation of BKC and maintenance thereof. And uh, they have over a period of time have been releasing only that much space which was required at that one of time and going forward we shall continue to see the same there is still potential there is still availability which will continue to come in this market so uh, i don't want to believe that it has uh, plateaued out or saturated there is a lot to bkc still left well tell us what the going rates are for commercial space right now in comparison to say a lower parallel or an urban point well, uh, first of all, I would say this point of time is not the right time to talk about the prices in BKC because at least for commercial properties, the prices have almost bottomed out. So uh, if I have to give a complete perspective, there was a time when uh, the spaces here were leased out at as much as uh, upwards of 300 to 350 rupees a square foot per month. Yes, it did go down much. At the moment, it is still available. The good properties here would be more than 250 rupees to 300 rupees kind of bracket you will find. But on an average, you will find properties closer to 200 rupees in most of the buildings today. That's rate per square foot per month. And comparatively, if I'm talking about, say, a lower peril for that matter, once again, the same logic. The lower peril rates that we're talking about today are not the right rates. Obviously, it'll go up with time. It's a pure demand supply scenario. So going forward, I would look at corrections, these prices going up. But since you asked a comparative, if it is 150 in lower peril, I would say 250 in BKC. I put you on the spot. How many deals are you working on in BKC right now? Something has to be confidential, <laughs> but still I can say that at least seven, eight deals are live from my organization itself. All right. But Ravi, a lot of the, uh, the companies that have moved have CEOs and top management who like to live around where they work. Uh, what, what impact has BKC had on the resi markets in and around BKC as a neighborhood? 
uh, we are seeing a host of developments in and around the Bandra East, Kalina, CST, those locations support Bandra Kurla complex. The only benchmark that goes to my mind when you compare the erstwhile Narman Point CBD with you know buildings like NCPA already quoting at 100,000 rupees a square foot, you know BKC has yet more a lot to catch up with the average pricing of 50,000 rupees a square foot on the luxury side and on the, on the lower side about 20 to 25,000 rupees a square foot. The CEOs, the senior management will clearly want to work, uh, you know, walk to work and if they do that, you know, developments like these where we're sitting, you know, the Suntech, uh, you know, realty will only fetch today 50,000 rupees a square feet, may go up to the NCPA uh, benchmark of 100,000 rupees a square foot in the future. So, Sumesh, as a, you know, as part of uh, the building community in BKC, one of the concerns about BKC is the lack of infrastructure. So, it's great on the inside, but if I'm going to try and either leave BKC or come in in the morning, it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, what is the conversation the state government is having with builders in the neighborhood about improving infrastructure, improving connectivity with the rest of the city? So, uh, Faye, what we noticed was uh, in the last, uh, you know, seven to eight years, what has happened is the biggest strength of BKC was obviously the location. It is actually located in the center of Mumbai. So, the moment you realize that the connectivity of BKC to the eastern suburb, the western suburb, and with the Bandra, uh, Bandra Worli Sea Link, it is hardly five, ten minutes away from the uh, uh, Worli Sea Face. So, in terms of location, this uh, location of 200 hectares of BKC enjoys a phenomenal uh, locational advantage. Now, yes, your point of uh, you know the infrastructure, the last bit of, bit of bottlenecks to connect it to the highways on the eastern side and the western side. I think uh, about 15 days back, our uh, uh, honorary chief minister as well as our uh, MMRDA uh, chief, they have uh, you know approved five to six connecting points or connectivity to the entire Bombay city. So the government, I think, in terms of connectivity is taking a lot of pain. And I think in the next two to three years, you will see that this connectivity to the entire Bombay will only improve in the, in the best manner. Uh, in all fairness, if it's going to take two to three years to build, then we should be prepared for two to three years of inconvenience on the roads in the very least. Gulam, tell me this. Uh, I mean, this particular building is upwards of, you know, it's in the bracket of 50 CR. For those people who can't afford that and who still want to either buy an apartment that's close to BKC or who want to invest in an apartment because of BKC, what are the other neighborhoods that we can look at at this point? See, as uh, we have seen many other places in Mumbai, there's this uh, very curious affinity of developers of naming locations. So the surroundings of BKC, which were not really BKC, say Bandra East, Kalanagar and Government Colony on one side, on the other side, Ghatkopar, Chembur area and even the CST, uh, the link between Santa Cruz and Chembur. These areas have actually now been described as extensions of BKC. So like any successful uh, location would have 10 more satellite locations emerging, this is exactly what's happening. So the same Bandra East that we're talking about, say about 5-7 years back, it used to be traded, the properties there, the new developments there were going for less than uh, 12 to 13,000 rupees a square foot, have shot up to almost about 28,000 rupees on an average today. So that's the kind of uh, upswing that has happened purely because of success story of BKC. And the connectivity, as Sumesh was explaining, from BKC to uh, Chembur is opening up pretty fast. And that connectivity on the other side, the flyovers on Western Expressway are under construction. So a lot many of these things are happening, which will obviously improve connectivity. And then you spoke about the ticket size. If we're talking about 50 crores for somebody who wants to live in BKC, say about 20 to 25 crores if you want to go out in Bandra East. And if you still have less than 10 crores, you can actually travel to say a Lokhandwala on one side or Ghatkopar on the other. And that way it keeps on spreading. So the improved connectivity will actually give you immense opportunity, immense possibility for people who are going to work over here to find their homes all around this area. All right, Ravi, I have a quick question for you considering we're talking about uh, you know, apartments close by. Anup has written in. He said he recently bought a home to live in in Nahar Amrit Shakti Chandvili in Andheri East uh, for 1.54 crore rupees. It's a two bedroom. What's your opinion of future appreciation in this area? So, Chandvili, for example, is now the new Pawai. Yeah. So, uh, what can he expect from Nahar Amrit Shakti? So, you rightly said, Chandvili has excellent and very close proximity to a very upmarket suburb called Pawai, and it gains out of that. On the other hand, we've seen the metro connect with Chandivali so beautifully because it's just about four to five minutes walking distance 
for the metro to just get off and the people to reach to their homes. Uh, the project in, in, in case the Amrit Nahar uh, is, uh, is a large complex, uh, a mini township of its own and I feel that has great benefits. Uh, if he's purchased this apartment recently, uh, to my mind there wouldn't be significant appreciation in the short term uh, because prices have run up. However, I think in the long term he can look at very steady appreciation of nothing less than about 10 to 12 percent per annum uh, over the next five to seven years, I would say. Welcome back. You're watching the Property Guide and Etina. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're in BKC right now. We're talking about future prospects of this area. Uh, Gulam, one of the things that the state government is talking about, two things actually. First of all, is turning BKC into some sort of a smart location or a smart mini city. Uh, how much, how further are we from that actually happening? Well, uh, we need to do a lot of work on that. It's easier said than done. Uh, because the moment we talk of smart city, I can at least to me, it's something like a Singapore where if I am sit I'm, I'm standing on a bus station, I know exactly how long the next bus that is going to come to my stop will gonna, is going to take. How, how long is it from my stop? All those things. Now, that's something which a, a, a smart city stands for. If I have to recreate that in BKC, it cannot happen in isolation. Because if that bus is coming from Andheri, and, and uh, uh, maneuvering through all those uh, small lanes and by lanes and clogged areas of Mumbai, then obviously it goes for a toss. As we have spoken about, not more than uh, a couple of uh, uh, 50, 60 or 100 odd CXOs who will be staying over here and walking to work. But for the rest of them, the connectivity matters. And without that, if you have uh, 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 an isolated smart city, as if you have to uh, uh, dedicate that as a smart city, I doubt if it is going to work. So, Swish, for a ticket size of 50 CR right now, in terms of smart living, what are you offering your customers? Uh, Sophie, I'd just like to correct you that uh, these are three projects that we are developing. Suntec Reality is developing three projects in BKC. So the flagship project is Signature Island, which is uh, which starts from 35 crore and goes up to 55 crore. But we have other two projects, which is Signia Isles and Signia Pearl, which starts upward of 20 crore rupees. So the way Still we a heavy ticket size though. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, BKC has limited supply. So the, the role model obviously was always the NCPA of, uh, to create an NCPA of BKC. So the, uh, the, the target market or the way we have approached in terms of these projects is to obviously cater to the needs of the uh, CXOs and the CFOs or the promoters of the corporates who are operating in and out of BKC and around of BKC. So in terms of the amenities, we have a tie-up with an international concierge desk which will be operating out of BKC with a presence in more than 35 countries. In terms of brand tie-ups, it will have a convenience store, this has an ATM uh, you know, uh, uh, within, the, within the complex, in terms of high-end security, uh, the temperature control swimming pool, in terms of uh, this, the three, all the three projects will be Wi-Fi connected, you know, uh, we'll have a business club within the premises. So in terms of uh, you know, the landscaped area, in terms of the garden in and around the uh, complex, I think we have tried to take the luxury to another level uh, for our customers who would be operating in and out of BKC. Well, Ravi, I want to ask you this. There is, like, like we were talking about just now, the state government is planning alternate BKCs or alternate smart uh, CBDs and they're looking at Oshivara, they're looking at the Kanjumarg area. Now, when we talk about investments on a stock market channel, you don't invest in an Infosys and expect it to repeat the last 10 years. You look for the next big thing. Uh, how soon is it going to be before these two locations become the next big thing? Would it make sense for somebody to consider investments there right now or would you say wait and watch? So to my mind, I think it's going to be a while. BKC itself took almost two decades uh, you know, in the making and in the last decade it accelerated in terms of the shift from South Mumbai to North when you talk about corporate shift. To my mind, before Oshivara and before Kanjurmar, what may come to life will be a location like Vadala. MMRDA is focusing on establishing Vadala as a commercial hub. Uh, and then, of course, uh, from a long-term perspective, you will see locations like Oshivara as well as Kanjurmark. But medium term, maybe even Vadala is, you know, four or five years away. Uh, in terms of investment, uh, I think Vadala has already seen uh, a, a, a huge investment, a huge capital appreciation. Again, thanks to the infrastructure connecting the eastern suburbs between Vadala, Chembur, Belk, we've, we've always spoken about it at your shows. And I think that is seen in the capital appreciation. Uh, in terms of price, I think prices are almost peaking and saturating. Uh, sales have stagnated. Uh, so whether it will still be an investor's delight to look at these locations and expect significant appreciation, 
I may be a little cautious on that and therefore advise investors to hold on and watch and let, let the infrastructure actually first come up. So be a little cautious on investments, but yeah, in the long run, they will all pay out. Well, Gulam, if you're talking about the new, we should also talk about the old. There were reports also about the fact that rentals for resi in South Mumbai have begun to fall. Tell us what's going on in that South Mumbai market, in and around Nariman Point in terms of residential for that market. Look, uh, the rental obviously is, uh, the demand for rental is coming out of floating population. And uh, that floating population is in that South Mumbai area because they have CBDs where they are going to work. And if those CBDs have started shifting, obviously there is bound to be an impact on the housing requirement. The floating population will have to relocate to some other location. And hence, the demand for South Mumbai residential property, especially on rent, is bound to go down and which is what the market is facing right now. And uh, I can tell you that uh, in last five years, every owner of the property in uh, South Mumbai is facing that situation where earlier you, you, the wait for uh, finding another occupier for the property used to be not more than a quarter. Now we can find many apartments which are vacant for more than a year. So there is so much of vacancy that has, that has come in already in the South Mumbai market because of this whole relocation. Okay, I want to give you a challenge as well. Uh, Wilson has written in, he wants to buy a two-bedroom apartment. He says, in Mumbai, with a budget of 50 lakh rupees, please give me some good locations. Now, we were talking about 20 CR to 50 CR, which is what it costs to buy in Mumbai, at least upwards of 2 CR. Can you help him? Is there anything he can buy for 50 lakhs at all? Uh, I would want to break down Wilson's requirement to understand uh, what can fit in. And uh, if I say the least, the smallest size of apartment that one could look at, a one-bedroom hall kitchen flat, with uh, say 600 square feet kind of an area, 50 lakh cannot go beyond 8,000 rupees kind of a range. Now if I have to work backwards, uh, well we all know that uh, as we keep coming south, the property rates keep going up and if I have to start from say Vasai Virar closer to Mumbai, I would say I can't come beyond Burivali to fit into this kind of a budget. You know, because even in Burivali, it's going to be a tough task only in old dilapidated buildings would you get something for 8,000, 9,000 rupees kind of a rate. So essentially what I'm talking about, if you need a lifestyle, you need a good property, a recent development and high-end building, then perhaps Vasai Virar is the only option if you're talking on the western side. On the other side, once again, uh, you have to be Panvel and beyond or uh, on central side, it could be say, not even Ghorbandar Road because even there, their prices have gone upwards of 10,000 rupees. So it would perhaps be more towards Bhivandi direction, etc. I'm saying the options are limited if you want a good product, you'll have to travel a long distance. Welcome back. You're watching the Property Guide in ET now. Thank you so much for joining us. We're at Signature Island of SunTech Realty. And we're talking about BKC. Sumesh, before we move on, I also want to talk to you about the other projects that SunTech is working on, one of which is in, uh, in Gorigaon. Tell us what sort of response you've received in terms of sales and if there are any other new launches that the company is working on in Mumbai right now. We launched the property about one and a half years back. Uh, we have sold close to 500,000 square feet till date, so which is about 250 odd apartments already. So I think in terms of responses, I think people are trying to look at that bracket of 1.2 to 1.5 crore ticket size. And I think that is where we have tried to, you know, uh, provide the market a luxury segment. And I think it has been taken up by the audience very well. Right. Also an area that requires a lot of attention in infrastructure and easing of traffic there in Goriga. We have another question. Ravi Sandeep Uni has written in. He wants to buy his first home purely for an investment. So that's an interesting mix. Planning to invest in Mumbai or the MMR region. He shortlisted either Vasai, West, Virar or Panvel. A budget of 35 to 38 lakh rupees. What would you recommend? Out of these, I would probably recommend Panvel. But again, I would caution him. Prices have run up in all these locations and one should have a long-term view. Why Panvel? Because I think some of the infrastructure uh, projects that may be announced and the government has made its intention very clear on two fronts. One is the Trans Harbour Link, uh, which will connect Sivri with Navashiva and make Mumbai probably just 20-25 minutes drive from central Mumbai uh, to touch Navi Mumbai. And, and the second reason is, uh, you know, the international airport that is already going to see a lot of traction and acceleration in its implementation. Uh, the Chief Minister went on record saying that these two projects will get priority. From my point of view, when these projects break ground 
and we've been waiting for over five to seven years, waiting for these projects. The, the, the masters will realize that it's a reality and there will be a renewed kind of interest to relocate to such locations. But as I said, already these rates are discounted. These, uh, you know, these developments were envisaged over the last three to four years. When you say a slightly longer term horizon for an investment in this area, how long would he have to wait? I would clearly say anywhere between three to five years could be a wait period for getting decent capital appreciation beyond these rates. So if he's investing 35 or say, let's say 40 lakh rupees in a yeah. Panvel now, in five years, what could he hope to sell it for? Uh, to my mind, uh, he would easily get 50% appreciation. A similar question, Nikhil is written in, Gulab. He wants to buy either a 500 or 800 square foot one bedroom apartment in Virar with a budget of 19 lakh rupees, preferably a property closest to Virar station. What would you recommend? And he, this is an end use uh, question. What would you recommend he does? Look, unfortunately, Virar has gone way beyond this budget. Uh, there was a time about five years back when uh, the average prices in Virar were still closer to 2,000 rupees. Today it has crossed 5,000 mark. And uh, the budget that we're talking about, once again, even a smallish one BHK would be 500 square rupees a 500 square foot. And with 20 lakh kind of a budget, you're talking about, you know, still less than 4,000 rupees kind of a budget. <clears throat> and to me, it doesn't yet make sense. I'm sure even closer to uh, railway station in uh, Virar, the prices are pretty high because even, those, even though the buildings are old, but because of the, the comfort of getting on to the railway station and so on, the demands are very high. And hence the prices I don't think will be less than four and a half, five thousand, even in the older buildings. So to me, the budget has to go up, otherwise it is going to be a big disappointment. All right. So unfortunately, that normally happens when you're buying a home in Mumbai. It tends to be out of the comfort zone of your budget. That brings us to an end of this show. Gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time with us at the Bandla Kurla Complex. If you have questions about anything you heard or anything to do with buying a home, write to us. Our email ID is at the bottom of your screen. It will be my pleasure to hear from you. You can reach me on Twitter as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you're planning on buying property around the BKC CBD, here are some projects you might find interesting. In Andheri East, Bliss by Vijay Lakshmi Infracon, Sevens by Kanika Spaces and Omkar V. Raheja. In Bandra East, Mayur by Geoprinya Spire Realty and 51 East by the Dadwala Group. Godrit Central in Chembur and Eastern Heights by the Satara Group. Orchid Metropolis in Kurla East and Alanza by Shamik Enterprises in Santa Cruz East.